Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever. I want to quote from someone who wrote of the Lord Jesus Christ under the title of One Solitary Life. Speaking of the Lord Jesus, it is said, He was born in an obscure village, the child of a peasant woman. He grew up in still another village where he worked in a carpenter shop until he was 30. Then for three years he was an itinerant preacher. He never wrote a book. He never held an office. He never had a family or owned a house. He didn't go to college. He never visited a big city. He never traveled more than 200 miles from the place where he was born. He did none of the things that are usually associated with greatness. He had no credentials but himself. He was only 33 when the tide of public opinion turned against him and his friends ran away. He was turned over to his enemies and went through the mockery of a trial. He was nailed to a cross between two thieves. As he was dying, his executioners gambled for his clothing, the only property he had on earth. When he was dead, he was laid in a borrowed grave through the pity of a friend. Nineteen centuries have come and gone, and today he is the central figure of the human race and the leader of mankind's progress. All the armies that ever marched, all the navies that ever sailed, all the parliaments that ever sat, all the kings that ever reigned, put together, have not affected the life of man on this earth as much as that one solitary life. Was he man, or is he God? If he was mere man, then we do not need to consider him very much. But if he was God, then we need to think seriously about our relationship with him. The people who listened to him speak, the people who watched him in operation said certain things about him. On one occasion, when he stood in a ship and rebuked the winds and the waves, causing a great calm, it was said of him, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? Then it is spoken by Peter the fisherman, when he thought of Christ, he said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. The Roman procurator who passed the death sentence on him said, I find no fault in this man. Hardened soldiers, when they were sent to arrest him, returned empty-handed, saying, Never man spake like this man. Even in his death, as he hung on the cross, when the army officer who was in charge of his crucifixion witnessed his death, he cried out, Surely this was the Son of God. I want to speak to you today about the Lord Jesus Christ. Him of whom it is said, He is the same yesterday and today and forever. Let us ask ourselves today exactly what that means to us. It means this, that what He, Jesus Christ, was, He is. It means that what He is, He will continue to be. The same yesterday, today, and forever. 
We read in the word of God, God speaking of himself, says, Behold, I am the Lord, I change not. I am the same from everlasting to everlasting. If we today can get a picture of what Jesus did in the past, we will have an understanding of what we can expect him to do in the present, seeing he is the same yesterday and today and forever. When the Lord Jesus Christ appeared on this earth nearly 2,000 years ago in a synagogue in Nazareth, he made a statement saying, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to preach deliverance to the captives, the opening of the prisons to them that are bound. When Jesus had made that declaration, he said, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And for three and a half years uh, we learn that he walked the shores of Galilee, healing the sick, cleansing the leper, raising the dead, feeding the hungry multitude. Everywhere he went, he was doing good. The writer said in Acts, uh, he said that Jesus went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. If Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever, then we understand that what he was, he is. What he did in the past, he will do in the present. He came with the declaration and the proclamation that God is a good God. When he spoke of his purpose, he said, I came not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And as we look at the demonstration of his power in the places he visited, we understand something of the great love of God when he sent Jesus Christ into this world. We read in John 3:16, For God so loved the world that he gave, his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. The word of God tells us, He that believeth on him is under no condemnation, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. The word of God tells us that Jesus came not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Let us look at it again. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, that is in the past, today, that is in the present, and forever, that is in the future. Jesus himself said, I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. When he thought of the sick and the needy, he said, they that are well need not a physician, but they that are sick. When he thought of the great needs of men and women and boys and girls, uh, he said, Come on to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Uh, he further declared, uh, looking at the needs of humanity, uh, the broken hearts, uh, the sad, sad lives, uh, he said, He that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. Today, it is my happy privilege uh, to say unto you who are hearing my voice uh, that Jesus Christ uh, has not changed. If he ever healed anyone, then he is still willing to heal someone today. If he ever forgave the sinner, then he is still willing to forgive the sinners today. If he ever fed the hungry multitude in the past, he is still willing to feed the hungry multitude in the present, because he is the same.
yesterday, and today, and forever. Over 30 years uh, of ministering the gospel of Jesus Christ, uh, I have seen men and women of different races, different classes, different creeds. Uh, I have seen them reach out uh, from the depths of her need, uh, from the depths of their need, uh, unto the living God, uh, and find in him the answer to all of their problems. There is a God who sits uh, on his throne, in heaven. There is a God who has the earth as his footstool. There is a God who loves men and women with an everlasting love. And when we were yet without strength, that same God sent Jesus Christ, his Son, to die for the ungodly. I am glad to declare unto you today that God is a good God. God is a big God. His goodness is past finding out and regardless of how great your need may be today, thanks be unto God, he is able to save uh, to the uttermost uh, all that come unto him. When Jesus walked this earth, uh, he moved in answer to faith. Uh, and regardless of where it was found, he moved to meet the need of faith. He did not segregate people with an acceptance for all who were rich and a rejection for all who were poor, but whoever came, no matter how afflicted, they were sure a sovereign remedy to find in him. If Jesus ever did heal, then we can expect him to heal today. If he ever did save, we can expect him to save today. If he ever fed the hungry multitude in the past, we can expect him to feed the hungry multitude in the present, because he is the same yesterday and today and forever. Let me tell you of one little woman who had suffered with an issue of blood for many, many years. The Bible tells us that she had spent all her living trying to get well, but nevertheless she grew worse. And when she was without God and without hope in the world, when she was at the deepest point of her need, uh, she saw Jesus Christ. Uh, she listened to his voice. Uh, she saw the miracles that he produced, uh, and faith was born in her heart, uh, so that deep within herself, uh, as faith was born, she said, uh, if I can but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be healed. And on a certain day and hour, as the multitudes were pressing upon the Lord Jesus Christ, rubbing shoulders with him, she came in the crowd and pressed through to touch the hem of his garment. When she touched him, something happened. Jesus said, Who touched me? The disciples who were with him said, Master, how sayest thou? Who touched me when everyone is pressing against you? Jesus answered them, saying, Someone touched me, for virtue is gone out of me. The little woman who had been healed instantly of the issue of blood came trembling before him and uh, confessed all that had happened. Jesus said unto her, Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. And she was healed uh, of that plague uh, from that very hour. Hallelujah. If Jesus Christ ever healed uh, in the past, uh, he is willing to heal in the present. Let me point you to uh, a centurion who had a servant grievously tormented with disease. Uh, and uh, the centurion came to the Lord Jesus Christ 
Christ, uh, saying, Master, Lord, uh, my servant lieth at home grievously tormented. Immediately, Jesus said, I will come and heal him. The centurion replied, saying, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, uh, but speak the word only, and my servant uh, shall be healed. Jesus marveled at the faith of the man, and he replied uh, with the answer, Go thy way, be it unto thee, as thou hast believed. And uh, his servant was healed uh, from that very hour. We ought to understand uh, by this uh, that Jesus Christ uh, is willing to receive the sinner. We ought to understand that God in his great love uh, is not waiting for men to be worthy to receive uh, his blessing, uh, but God in his great love, uh, in his great mercy, is waiting for men and women to recognize his goodness uh, and to come before him with with all of their need, uh, believing uh, that God is a good God. We are told in the Word of God that the same Lord who is over all, that is, uh, the Creator of heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, that very God uh, who made the sun, the moon, uh, and the stars, that God who made the mountains, that God who made the rivers, that God who made the hills, that God who made the valleys, uh, it is said of him that that God who is over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Hallelujah. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. As I speak to you today, I speak from many years of experience in seeing God move in the demonstration of his power to bring salvation and healing and deliverance to countless multitudes. Uh, thanks be unto God, uh, the difference between men and women is whether or not they call upon the name of the Lord. The word of God, I repeat, says... Uh, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. And the Bible is filled with the stories of men and women who out of the depths of their need reached to heaven and found God to be the answer to their every problem. In the book of Hebrews in chapter 11, we read of some of them, how that through faith they subdued kingdoms, they wrought righteousness, they obtained promises, they stopped the mouths of lions. Uh, they quenched the violence of fire. They escaped the edge of the sword. Uh, some even had their dead raised to life again. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. That means what he was, he is. Uh, and what he is, uh, he will continue to be. That means that if men called upon him in the past and received the answer to their problems, uh, surely men in the present can call upon him and find him to be the answer to their every need. I want to point you to a verse uh, that was spoken by our Lord Jesus Christ uh, in Mark's Gospel, chapter 11. We find uh, that Jesus put a curse on a barren fig tree. And the next day, when the disciples were passing the same place, Peter brought to remembrance uh, the fact that Jesus had said to the tree, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. In reply uh, to Peter, Jesus said, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and shall not doubt, but shall believe in his heart, that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. He further said, Therefore I say unto you, What things soever you desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. I ask you today, what is the mountain in your life? Is it sin? Is it sin holding you in its grip and you seem unable to break free? Is it sickness? Is it disease? Is it despair? Is it fear? Is it worry? Whatever your need may be, I want to tell you that that mountain can be removed as the word of faith is spoken. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, who appeared in the end of time to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself, made the statement, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Oh, we know that if God be God, then with God nothing shall be impossible. But Jesus reached the power of God from his hands into the hands of ordinary man when he said, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Oh, my beloved friend, today, as you listen to my voice, uh, I beseech you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, prepare your heart uh, to reach out to God. Uh, focus your faith uh, on a God who is uh, a big God, on a God who is a good God, uh, on a God whose ear is open to your cry, on a God who is not a dead God, but a living God, a God who is the same from everlasting to everlasting, a God who knows no change, a God who has set bounds for the oceans, a God who is over all, and he is waiting to hear your cry unto him today. For the word of God tells us, speaking of that God who formed all things by the word of his power. That God says his eye is going to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of, of them whose hearts are made perfect toward him. Oh, will you today prepare yourself uh, to receive the answer to faith? Uh, in a few moments from now, I am going to speak uh, as the anointed servant of the Lord uh, with the sincere prayer and desire that every man, every woman, every boy, every girl who is hearing my voice uh, will lift up their hearts uh, to receive uh, from heaven. Will you get ready now uh, to receive uh, from the hand of God? Wherever you are, as you hear my voice, lay your hand on the part of your body that is sick. Uh, and lay your hand on your radio right now where you are listening and believe God. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak the word of power and the word of authority in your name today. I believe according to your book uh, that you sent your word uh, to heal men and women and meet their needs. Uh, and as I stand before you today, an anointed servant of the Lord, uh, I speak the word of authority to sin, to sickness, uh, to disease, uh, and to despair. For every person who is now laying their hands uh, on their needy bodies uh, and laying their hands on the radio in prayer, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command the healing virtue of the Lord Jesus Christ to flow to meet their every need. Holy Father, in Jesus' name, touch them from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet, from the tips of their fingers to the tips of their toes. Liberate them, Lord, near and far as they receive uh, your word uh, and your way and your will right now. In Jesus' name, liberate them. In Jesus' name, set them free. In Jesus' name, meet their need uh, and cause them to glorify the God of heaven who is rich unto all that call upon him. Set them free now and cause them to glorify you. In the name of Jesus Christ, uh, I decree it. Amen and amen. Raise your hands to heaven right where you are and begin to thank God for his goodness. Begin to thank him that the same Lord who is over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Thank him that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. 
Thank <laughs> you.